Good morning. The NATO defense ministers will uh, meet at the critical time for our security. Next week, we mark uh, uh, the, one, the first year of uh, uh, the terrible war in Ukraine, the uh, full-fledged invasion by Russia against uh, Ukraine. And we see uh, no signs that uh, President Putin uh, is preparing for peace. Uh, what we see is the opposite. Uh, he is preparing for more war, for new offensives and uh, new attacks. So it makes it just even more important that uh, NATO allies and partners um, uh, provide more support uh, to Ukraine. And we will meet uh, later on today in the US-led uh, contact group uh, for uh, Ukraine and address the urgent needs for uh, increased support to Ukraine. Not least the need to provide uh, more ammunition and uh, also how to ramp up uh, production uh, and strengthen our defense industry to be able to uh, provide uh, the necessary uh, ammunition uh, to Ukraine and also to replenish our own uh, stocks. Um, we will also, at the defense ministerial uh, meeting, um, um, agree uh, new uh, long-term guidelines for our defence uh, planning to uh, s further strengthen our deterrence and defence, something which is uh, extremely important uh, uh, in a world which is uh, more uh, competitive uh, and more dangerous and when there's a full-fledged war going on uh, in uh, Europe. Um, allies will also uh, start to discuss uh, the new defence investment pledge uh, how to ensure that we uh, continue to invest more in defence and, uh, and also address uh, um, uh, the uh, protection of critical infrastructure, um, uh, in particular uh, undersea infrastructure, offshore infrastructure, uh, because we have seen that uh, uh, these undersea uh, cables, pipelines are vulnerable and it's important that we coordinate more our efforts uh, to uh, protect the critical uh, infrastructure. We are all horrified by uh, the terrible toll uh, caused by the earthquakes in Turkey. Uh, NATO allies uh, are providing substantial support to Turkey. This support needs to continue um, and we need to uh, stand in solidarity and sustain our support uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, Turkey. Uh, then I'm ready to take your questions. Secretary from Associated Press. Over the last year, NATO's gone from providing non-lethal assistance allies to providing artillery to tanks. Now we're talking about jet aircraft. The Ukraine contact group is meeting in NATO headquarters. Why should the public believe that NATO is not at war with, with Russia? Neither NATO nor NATO allies uh, are party to the conflict. Uh, what we do uh, as NATO allies and NATO is to provide support to Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine is defending itself. Uh, we need to understand what this is. This is a war or aggression. Uh, President Putin, uh, Russia, uh, has attacked a sovereign, independent, democratic, free nation in Europe, Ukraine. And of course, Ukraine has the right to defend itself. The right of self-defense is enshrined in the UN Charter. It's a part of international law. And of course, we have the right to help Ukraine uphold uh, their right for self-defense. So NATO and NATO allies are not party to the conflict, but we support Ukraine in the right of uh, self-defense. Then, of course, the type of support we provide to Ukraine has evolved as the war has evolved. In the beginning, it was extremely important to provide uh, uh, light uh, anti-tank uh, weapons like the uh, javelins. Uh, then uh, we saw uh, the need for, uh, for artillery and NATO allies provided more and more advanced artillery uh, systems. Uh, then uh, uh, it became obvious that it was an urgent need for also more advanced uh, air defense systems and NATO allies are now providing um, Patriots, SAMT and other advanced uh, air defense systems, NASAMs. Um, and, uh, and now, uh, over the last uh, weeks and months, uh, allies have also agreed to further step up uh, significantly when it comes to heavy uh, weaponry, uh, armor, uh, infantry fighting vehicles, but also uh, main battle tanks. So yes, uh, the type of support has involved, and, 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 and that's part of uh, the ongoing consultations uh, among allies within NATO, within the, the Ukraine uh, support group. 
uh, and, uh, and it will continue because we need to, need to ensure that Ukraine um, uh, gets the weapons uh, uh, it needs uh, to be able to uh, retake territory, liberate the lands and win this war and prevail as a sovereign independent nation. Let me just add two more things uh, on the issue of weapons. One is that it is important to discuss systems, what types of platforms we should provide to Ukraine, and it has evolved. But it's also extremely important to ensure that all the systems that are already delivered work as they should. So meaning that, for instance, when it comes to artillery, we need ammunition, we need spare parts, we need maintenance, we need all the logistics to ensure that we are able to sustain these uh, weapon systems. So it's not only about discussing new systems, but ensuring that all the existing systems are working as they should. This has become a grinding war of, att of attrition, and therefore it's also a battle of logistics, and this is a huge effort by allies to actually be able to get in the ammunition, the fuel, the spare parts, uh, which are needed. The other thing I would say is that the war didn't start in February last year. The war started in 2014 and since 2014 NATO allies have provided support to Ukraine with training, with equipment, uh, so the Ukrainian armed forces were much stronger uh, uh, in 2022 than they were in, 2020, uh, in 2014 and of course that made a huge difference when uh, President Putin uh, decided to attack Ukraine. A question on the fighter jets. After the EU Council last week, the Polish Prime Minister Morawiecki said that from his perspective it would need a unanimous decision by NATO whether in principle fighter jets could be delivered. Are you preparing any kind of decision like this? Thanks. As the urgent need now is to deliver uh, what has already been promised, uh, to uh, deliver the, uh, the armoured vehicles, the, the infantry fighting vehicles, the, the, the German martyrs, the, uh, the, the, the US uh, uh, Bradleys and of course also uh, the main battle tanks, the Leopards and the other battle tanks that have been uh, 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 pledged uh, and, and, and we see that allies are stepping up, we need the training, we need the equipment, we need the, the ammunition and that's exactly what allies uh, are now providing and will be a top uh, issue in, uh, at the meetings uh, uh, today here, here at, uh, 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 at NATO. And also to ensure that we have uh, the ammunition and, uh, and all the other things we need to all the other systems which are already de uh, delivered. Um, so, so uh, the issue of aircraft is not uh, the most urgent issue now, uh, but it is an ongoing discussion. Uh, and as I've said before, uh, we have uh, ongoing consultations among allies on the type of systems allies uh, should deliver to uh, Ukraine, and that will continue. And we have evolved uh, the type of support we, have, uh, we are providing to Ukraine has changed and evolved over the time, and it will continue to change and evolve as this war uh, uh, develops. Um, George, <coughs> pick up on your story too. Um, uh, Sekjen, you uh, yesterday mentioned already that ministers also will discuss how to improve support, practical support to partner countries as Georgia, Moldova, Bosnia, Herzegovina. Should we expect some uh, decisions today and how also going implementation process regarding tailored made package for Georgia? I think that one of the lessons we have learned already from the war in Ukraine is the importance of uh, provide support uh, to partners. Uh, sooner than later. Uh, as it was important to support Ukraine uh, before the invasion, it is also important to uh, support other partners which are uh, 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 vulnerable for Russian uh, interventions. Um, uh, and, uh, and therefore, um, allies have agreed to step up our uh, uh, partnership, uh, strengthen our partnership with uh, partners like, uh, for instance, Georgia. And we are now uh, working on uh, uh, how to step up uh, support uh, related to uh, cyber crisis uh, management and secure communications. So yes, tailored partnership, tailored support is part of what we do with uh, partners like, uh, like uh, uh, Georgia. Uh, yes, Tony William Balanem, Finland. If uh, Turkey wants to ratify Finland before Sweden, would that be acceptable for NATO and what would be the consequences? So first of all, I think you need to understand uh, the, the historic dimension of what NATO allies have already uh, decided. Uh, 
all allies uh, made an historic decision at the NATO summit in uh, July last year to invite uh, Finland and Sweden to become uh, full members of the alliance. Then all allies, uh, all 30 allies, signed the accession protocol, uh, uh, protocols of Finland and Sweden, and so far 28 out of 30 allies have already ratified. So this has been um, the quickest ratification or accession process in NATO's modern history, and uh, as invitees, which is now the status that Finland and Sweden uh, uh, have as, as invited uh, members, uh, Finland and Sweden are uh, more and more uh, integrating into NATO's military and civilian structures. Finland and Sweden sit at the NATO table, participate in our meetings uh, and in our consultations. So uh, uh, Finland and Sweden are in a very different place now than before they uh, applied. Uh, they are in a much better place. They have uh, bilateral uh, security uh, assurances from many allies. They are integrating into NATO and NATO has increased its, its presence in the region. So already both Finland and Sweden are uh, uh, much closer and much more integrated in, uh, to, uh, to NATO. So uh, the main question is not whether Finland and Sweden uh, are ratified together. Uh, the main question is that uh, they are both ratified as full members as soon as possible. And I'm confident that both uh, will uh, uh, be full members uh, and are working hard to get uh, both uh, ratified as soon as possible. Uh, Secretary General, uh, we understand that sending fighter jets to Ukraine is a long-term investment, but uh, the first steps could already be taken. Uh, for example, the United Kingdom has already started uh, had already uh, launched a training program for Ukrainian pilots. So, do you think that NATO can collectively take the first step and agree uh, training Ukrainian pilots uh, today or? Uh, well, so you're right that some allies, the uh, United Kingdom, has uh, started training of uh, pilots and, 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 and allies are now uh, uh, consulting and uh, there is a conversation uh, ongoing between allies on also uh, the issue of uh, aircraft uh, delivery to, uh, to Ukraine. But as I said, our top priority, the urgent need now, is to ensure the heavy weaponry, the modern air defense systems, the ammunition, uh, all the other things we need to ensure that uh, Ukraine gets uh, the uh, uh, advanced and, and, uh, and modern systems which are already being pledged and that can really make a difference on the battlefield. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thank you.